Good morning, friends. I have a friend named Steve who has gotten me to drinking hazelnut coffee. Uh, I don't think of myself as an ad addictive type personality, but I got to tell you, I'm loving the hazelnut coffee. Thank you, Steve. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Uh, I think I need to start today's video with an apology. In my last video, we were walking around out here in the Arizona desert, and we found this very artful design of rocks being piled up, and I talked about witches and Wiccans, and uh, I seem to be getting a few comments from Wiccans and witches who don't think I know what I'm talking about. So let's start my apology to the Wiccans and witches by saying, you're absolutely right, I don't know what I'm talking about. I had seen this thing in the desert the day before, and uh, being curious about it, I started looking on uh, the internet. And here's what I read. Uh, Wiccan, this is from the Urban Dictionary, so... Maybe uh, we should have looked somewhere else, but this is what I read. Wiccans are different than witches to get one thing straight. Witches normally use potions, spells, and chants, etc. Wiccans use what's called the third eye sense. They feel what's around them and can sometimes predict future events or someone you will meet in the future with that beautiful third eye sense they have. My mistake was conflating the third eye sense with the evil eye, as I'm looking at that eye that was made in the desert out of the white rocks. And if you don't know what I'm talking about in this video, go back and look at my last video. Uh, and then I was talking about bad things happening. Uh, and I read this additionally, right down below that. A Wiccan is a person who participates in witchcraft, usually a hippie-like person. They're often found sitting under trees in fields by parks and can be blamed for bad things happening. That's all I know about Wiccans and witches. I apologize for pretending to know more than I knew, and uh, I just got it from Googling that. Which brings me to uh, one of the things I need to talk about in today's video. Having apparently offended some Wiccans or witches uh, by saying that Wiccans don't use spells and potions or whatever, um and claiming that bad things can happen, as I read, my $4,000 Norcold 1200 refrigerator quit yesterday. <laughs> I, I believe in karma. I don't believe in Wiccans and witches. And uh, if I'm wrong, that's enough. A $4,000 refrigerator going bad, uh, that's enough bad karma for this week. Thank you very much. Where are you going, Lynn? And before you leave a lot of comments about what I should do or check about the refrigerator, let me tell you that I pretty much understand how these work and what can go wrong with them and what needs to be checked. And we've done all of those things <clears throat> And several more that uh, most people don't even know about. And, in addition to that, I've got two HVAC guys camped next to me who have also confirmed my opinions about it. Uh, the expected life expectancy of the Norcold 1200 is 10 to 12 years. And this one's 20 years old, so... I guess I've gotten my use out of it. But the fact is that it's going to be an expensive fix. 
Fortunately, I'm camped with good friends who help each other, as nomads do. And my friend Donnie has loaned me this. Uh, what's the brand? Winer, Winer. And it's working great. Uh, so, Mama's got cold milk. Ooh, it's 34 degrees. I could actually turn that up a little. I'm running it on uh, 110 volts off of my inverter. It doesn't seem to work great on 12 volts, but I don't think that's the fault of the refrigerator. I think it's the fault of the 12 volt plug I got down here not being able to carry enough amperage to run it. But it works great on um, uh, uh, 120 volts. And it's not taking uh, very much power at all. It's running right now and it's taking, uh, I think it says, well it says 4 amps. It, it takes about 7 when it's running. I thought it was running. Oh. It's my furnace that was running. Not my furnace itself, but the blower. Anyway, um, I'm real happy with that little fridge. Seems there are a number of ways to fix this problem. One of them is to uh, buy a new refrigerator and that particular model with the two freezers above and the double French doors below costs around $3,800 and then if it's got some other uh, a newer model and this one has an ice maker and Anyway, we're talking about between four and five thousand dollars for one just like that. And uh, another solution is to replace the um, ammonia sy system that's on the back of it, and that costs around eleven or twelve hundred dollars. Another solution is to get a residential fridge. And for the cost of a refrigerator like that, uh, I could get a residential fridge that will fit in that space. And uh, for around $1,200, $1,300, and compared to $4,000, I could stick a couple more lithium batteries in here. And that would be another solution for the same kind of money. I probably could run it off of the four... AGM golf carts I have, but my diesel furnace overnight when it's cool takes a lot of power. So even with a thousand watts of solar, I'm already right on the cusp of not having enough power overnight if it's cold out. Um, oh, and if we've watched television for three or four hours with the satellite uh, dish going. Anyway, that's another solution, is a residential fridge, and I was considering that. And then another solution was brought to my attention, and that is that you can convert these Norcold 1200s into 12-volt compressor model fridges. And that's like about $1,300, not counting labor. But it's stuff that I could do myself. It requires pulling the refrigerator out, laying it down, taking all of the stuff off of the back of it and replacing it. Uh, and I think that's the solution that I'm leaning towards today. Anyway, uh, that's what goes on out here in uh, RVing. That sounds uh, expensive, but I guess if you amortize it over the number of years that fridge has worked, it's done well. When I bought this uh, RV, one of my, and I have always resisted the idea of calling this a coach, which 
a lot of people call it a coach because it is a 40 foot diesel pusher, um, a 40 foot Monaco diesel pusher. But anyway, uh, we've resisted saying, uh, using the term coach just because we think it sounds pretentious. So it's my RV. Hello, Lynn. Hello, Terry. What are you doing today? Drinking coffee and Drink, smoking. Drinking coffee and smoking. Yeah. You know, every time you mention smoking or somebody sees you smoking in my videos, they start giving me hell about not getting you to quit. And uh, my my answer when I answer those kind of comments is always, husbands can't be doctors. Uh, also, husbands have learned after 47 years to just keep their damn mouth shut. I wouldn't say that. <laughs> There's okay. living proof of it sitting right there behind the camera. <laughs> duh. Yeah, duh. Anyway, so when you get done with all that, what are you going to do today? Go shopping. What are we going to go shopping for? I'm not supposed to say. A refrigerator? Huh? A refrigerator? Yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Cigarettes. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. I had to say that because otherwise somebody would think it was something even more nefarious. Well, you're in the. You're kind of. Let's talk about the refrigerator. Turn off your camera. You're kind of in the Let dark. Let me through. Okay. Oh, sorry. Pasale, por okay. favor. You're still on camera. Uh, huh? Hello. Hello. Oh, you're putting stuff in the new little fridge. My coffee. Was it cold? Yes. This is a very good little refrigerator. Yes, it is a very good little refrigerator. It's just that Maybe it I could doesn't fit here. Maybe I could talk Donnie into selling that to me. Or you could buy a new one. It's about $600. For yeah, that for yeah, that buy a for that refrigerator model. Refrigerator? Huh? Uh, with a freezing compartment. How much did you say that would be? I'll just buy a house refrigerator. Uh, around thirteen hundred dollars for the one that will fit in there. It's a Samsung RF eighteen. But the problem with that is getting this one out and getting the other one in. And I've measured the other one will come in through the door. I'd have to probably remove the chair here. Um, getting the other one out, um, what they often do is remove the windshield, which is not something I'm going to let happen. The other thing that I've seen people do is use a sawzall and just saw the old one in half, you know, from top to bottom, in order that it's small enough to fit through the door. All of which seems highly labor-intensive to me. If you do what you were going to do and just buy a compressor unit or whatever you were talking about. Yes. And then you'd have to buy two more batteries to run it. Well, maybe not necessarily, but anyway. Can you buy a refrigerator that runs on propane? For $4,000, yeah. For $4,000? That's not so terrible of an investment. Well, it still requires getting that one out. And True. Th and the other part of that is, even if it weren't about the money, which it may or may not be, getting the new one in, you can't saw the new one in half to bring it in here. So what they do is they actually take out the windshield and to bring it through that way. And they break the windshield. They don't break it. They just take it out and put it back in. But taking it out and put it back in, this is not something I can do myself. No. Yeah. So, anyway, those are some of the considerations. It's not just about your ice cream. No, it's my ice cubes. Oh, your ice, <laughs> your, 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 your ice maker, yeah. Yeah. I love my ice maker. Well, you know, they make separate little ice makers. They just stand alone ice makers. 
You're thinking about this. No, I'm not. I don't know enough about this kind of stuff to have a conversation with you. Well, we just did have a conversation about it. And okay, then close your camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. First, I'm going to zoom in because everybody likes to see just how cute you are. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today. <laughs>